In the city with no shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a message. Can your family enjoy an evening of fine dining? Our style of parenting, well, it's nature-based. So we don't really go to restaurants with our children. We generally eat outside, because if we can, we prefer to. In this fine dining challenge, we need to see how our parents manage manners, new foods, and family time. And we've ordered the food. Hey, guys, how you doing? Hi, yeah, good. Can I just really quickly? There's a few, because it's old floorboards. There's a few loose nails and stuff. I wouldn't recommend having bare feet. Or at least just, can we just say, be careful? <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Everybody else had shoes on in that play. I wasn't bothered, no, I wasn't and either. I would have thought, would anybody else have been bothered? Take a seat, children on this side, mum and dad here. It looks wow, very nice. How flash. Thank you very <laughs> much. Thank you. Strict parenting for us is around responsibilities and it's around correction. <laughs> Timothy. Excuse me, Timothy. <laughs> Listen to Dad, please. We are at a flash restaurant, so we need to have good table manners. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. No, thank Don't you. Don't be silly, please. Fork down, please. Fork down. The boundaries are very firm. OK, so we've got the oysters. Mm -hmm. OK. Are you going to try? Meal times are fairly easy occurrence in our house. There's always a few things that they don't like, but I do expect that they press through some of those dislikes to eat a small portion, even if they don't like it. it looks like vomit. OK, just don't, don't bang them on the table, cos you don't want to dent the table. Oh, yeah, really, mate. We do. Give me the definition of etiquette. Etiquette is, like, situationally appropriate behaviour. Thank you. I've got an escargot for you. This one is hot. really, really hot, so you've got to be super duper careful with that. <laughs> <laughs> the kid is genuinely nice. What? Imagine cooking this on our camp stove. <laughs> Yuck, no. <laughs> <laughs> If I don't want to eat something, I don't eat it. And I feel that to not give my children that same choice, it would be disrespectful. Are you sure you don't want to try one? We'll never know. I am sure. You're sure? Yeah. That's fair yeah. enough. I'd like everyone to try, please. For some of the menu, we're definitely going to have to coerce, bribe, pull out our parenting muscles to get through this one. Timothy, pop it in your mouth, okay? It's good, just swallow it. There you go. There might be a consequence of a refusal to eat the item. They might not end up with dessert that night. Well done, Timothy. Well done. Okay, Grace, are you going to try? No. Try it, okay? No. I'll do you a deal, okay? I'll eat the uncooked one if you put the cooked one in your mouth. No. Grace, she's shutting down. I don't know what's going on there inside of her, but th th this is not fun for her. I want to eat it. All right, well, uh, looks like you've got a few oysters to eat, Andrew. OK. <laughs> Take your battles. How are we feeling? I so appreciate table manners and all of that, but it just didn't seem very fun. I suppose part of the challenge that I heard was the table manners. And so we were seeking to parent in that way to sort of to highlight those things. Richard and Lyndon, the idea of etiquette is situationally appropriate behaviour. Was that situationally appropriate behaviour? If you're seven years of age, it, would there be anybody who could say that their child would sit down and not pick up their knife and fork when they sat at any table? I agree. Probably a lot of seven-year-olds might pick up their knife and fork and start playing with them. I suppose the only thing we would do differently is probably just ask them to stop doing that kind of grating behaviour with the knife and fork. We've got three families left to head off to dinner. Brett and Tony, Lara and Andrew, Jan and Donna, let's see how you went. All right, got a text. Can your family enjoy an evening of fine dining? Absolutely we can. We do a lot of food-based togetherness. For us as parents, the fact that we had four, I don't um, accommodate to different tastes and different <laughs> desires. You might be able to try some interesting and fun things that might push them out of their comfort zone. 
with the young lady here, yeah, please. The children have tried a lot of new experiences and new eating places and done fairly well. Watch what Daddy's doing, Raph. This is what you do. But at the same time, we're not immune from meltdowns or... Nobody's immune from meltdowns. How will we go home? We're going to eat dinner here yeah. and try some new things. We'll see how we go. Mummy, mm -hmm. in every front three restaurant is there a French guy? Hello, Bonjour. how are you? Harper's definitely got an open mind when it comes to trying foods. Let me just try the bread crustiness. Do you know what? Just eat it. Oh, can you hear that? Yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I'm starving. Stop. Chin chin. We've never made special menus, kid menus for her. You know, when we eat, she tends to eat the same thing as us. Les escargots. On peut partager? Can we share with you? Okay. Harper never tried uh, escargot before. Yo, vas-y. Um, oh, it's très bon. C'est ça? Oh my god, yeah. so good. Yummy. And she sees the reaction from us and she reads the energy from us and she's kind of excited as well. It's the yummy thing on earth. In the <laughs> world. Fine dining, full stop. No challenge. Yeah. There is no challenge. They taste like good. Oh, here we go. Look at Snails. Escargot. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I feel slimy. We've got two children that are very, very, very motivated by food. We've got two that probably not so much, but in saying that... We would always make them try something before they were turning their nose up. Yeah. Estragon? This is what they eat in France. Do you want to try one? No. <laughs> Tay, would you like to try? Mm -hmm. Tay, don't worry. You don't have to do anything you don't want to do. Though. One of the things children have complete control over is their eating. You cannot force feed them, and if you do, it's borderline child abuse. You can't open their mouth and put things in. Everything that goes in your mouth is your choice. Good job, babe. So you've got to find ways to encourage them to try new things and to do it in a calm way without overreacting. Oh. <laughs> oh. That's classy. <laughs> you probably should spit it in for now. AJ's oh. <laughs> batted out the table, which probably isn't great manners. Maybe if you didn't like it, you should spit it yeah. in the serviette like his dad did. <laughs> <laughs> Brett and I are a mishmash of lots of different things. Posh, I wouldn't say, is one of those. <laughs> We definitely have more than a smidge of bogan, absolutely, and I embrace the bogan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, three entirely different experiences there. Jan and Donna, that was like watching three adults sitting at a table. But for me, from that, what stood out was you, Lara, you said that forcing food is child abuse. Let's pull that back. <laughs> I meant, like, <laughs> sticking it literally in their mouth. So. I did not mean. <laughs> the offering is great, is not but the refusal, it is their body and it is their choice. And you put that, you put that well, you know, yeah. whatever goes in your mouth is your choice. For us, it was sort of a bit of a fun, let's have a try, oh, that's gross, you know, Brett spat it out, I made a really rude comment. <laughs> <laughs> We know that it can take up to 12 exposures to a food, meaning hearing about it, seeing you eat it, choosing it in the supermarket, even trying to cook it before they'll actually begin to like it. So take it slow and make it fun without force or bribery. It's really important that our children learn, grow, develop and try new things. When we support them in their struggle, they feel that we have faith in them. And so they're willing to try, they're willing to fail, and they're willing to learn.